Lusk Heritage Group have spent 30 years recording history and a lot of it was on video, a lot of it uh, was on audio, but we also have it on print. We have produced various books over the years. Uh, One of them, which is actually still available in print, I wrote myself. Uh, It's called Lusk Through the Ages. We've also got the story of Lusk. That's another book, which I think is very hard to get anymore. And we we wrote books uh, in association with other people about Thomas Ashe and that too. But what I want to do today is just give you some idea of what is in this little book, Lusk Through the Ages. It was written a long time ago, as far as I was concerned. Uh, And it's not claiming to be a history of Lusk or anything like it. It's a series of stories, anecdotes about Lusk, about people, about things associated with Lusk and with the people in Lusk. It includes people like my own mother, God rest her. But uh, So I'm going to just flick through and let you get uh, just an idea of what's in this book. If ever after this you decide you want to get it, then give us a shout because I'm only going to give you the bare bones today. It's sort of chronological in terms of it starts with uh, an article called the Larnians of County Dublin. And this is about the first people that have been recorded as living in Lusk. This goes back 6000 BC. This is the Stone Age. This is a long time ago. And the reason that they they feel, or history feels, that these people were the first recorded people uh, is largely because of flint and tools and things that were found here in North County Dublin. Uh, And very interestingly, uh, flint is something which doesn't really occur uh, in any uh, amount uh, in the south of Ireland. In fact, uh, Antrim and up around there is probably the the closest that there was any real amounts of flint. So I'm going to read you a couple of very short little, little things. As I go, these people, the Larnians, they were because they came from Larn, uh, but they originally came from probably, uh, well, certainly Scotland and maybe France, because in the Stone Age, it goes right back to when there was a a land bridge. Uh, We were actually connected uh, to uh, the mainland, as we now call it. Uh, But that was way back uh, when the whole place was covered with with, with ice in the Ice Age. And when when that all melted and the sea rose, uh, the, the... bridge to us was gone but these people originally probably came from France these people are believed to have come from southern France or from Spanish stock initially they made their way to the north of England where they merged with people known to archaeologists as the Creswellians uh, If the land bridge between Scotland and Ireland still remained naturally they would have continued their journey on foot If it was broken, the channel may have been nothing more than a a shallow waterway with narrower uh, uh, and studded with small islands. But one way or the other, these people came across from the continent. They came to the north and they moved down along the coast here in Ireland. uh, And there has been uh, a lot of their relics, their, their, their tools uh, found all around here all, all around Lusk, around Holt, uh around a lot of places. So that's the first article. It's just about as far back as we can see who, who, who started us. I'll give a, quite a big gap then I'll go from 6000 BC to to uh, 20 BC so so that's a long time until Cucullan appeared on the scene I have a, I have a, a big article in this and c- about Cucullan who married uh, Emer uh, Emer monarch from Lusk and again it's, it's a very interesting story uh, I'll read you just a couple of very small quick little bits Cucullan he was the foster son of uh, Conchobar the high king of Ulster he was rena- renowned not just for his great feats in battle but also for his extraordinary ability to attract women he was variously described as brilliant clever and nimble of hand fair of face and fine of figure and a dark sad man comeliest of all the men in Erin. But the Lusk women were a good match for 
even a Cucullin, uh, because Eamon, she wasn't a weeping violet either. She was said it was said of her that she had a voice like a board, was deft with the needle, her face was comely, her body slim and lithe, and the fame of her beauty was spread throughout all the land. So we were holding our own, even when we when when we were attracting the men uh, in those years. This tells the uh, the complete story and it's quite a long and fascinating story and this little book doesn't always stick history is is strange history turns into what people wrote uh, and it could be very different it depends on who wrote it and everything else so I mean I don't take uh, I take history very seriously but I also don't uh, take it as seriously that I can't get a laugh out of it the problem was when Cucullin came to Lusk uh, the daddy Fergal Monarch didn't want him. He wanted nothing to do with this Bowsy who was coming for his daughter. And I'm going to give you just a couple of lines. I imagined what it was like when he appeared, when he was looking for Emer, and he met the daddy. And the daddy said, see, see, see here, Cuckoo, so see, I'm warning you, so see, you might be big, to so see, I don't give a fig, to so see, when you're out in battles, to so see, or chasing cattle, to so see, or maybe swimming, to so see, or chasing women, to so see. Go, and you think you're the, the boss, to so see, with your gallop and horse, to so see, and your charioteers, to so see, and your bottle of beer, to so see. Now, that goes on for quite a bit longer. But uh, I'm just telling you that the history here, you can... It's very interesting, but it's a little bit of a smile uh, about it too. I move on then in the book to uh, St. McCullen uh, and Lusk Abbey. I'm sitting here, and yesterday was St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick and St. Maculin of Lusk, they had one thing in common besides their choice of religion. Ironically, it was the one thing that they had no choice in at all. It was the year of their death. Both men went to their heavenly reward in 497, having laid the foundations of a church here in Lusk, which has survived for more than 1,500 years. So I tell the story of uh, Lusk, of Lusk Abbey, uh, which became a very important uh, part of of the Catholic religion here. Now, the, the church you're looking at now, I mean, that only goes back to 1809 uh, but the actual ecclesiastical uh, base which was Lusk uh, goes back an awful lot longer. I have a lot of little little anecdotes about people and one of the ones that uh, I always think people will always remember who from my generation is Katie Hunt. Katie Hunt a little shop um, sitting under the the, the the old church here in Lusk uh, and I tell the story of Katie. I also tell stories of uh, places very close like Turvey House where uh, Turvey House is now, well it was a golf course, now it's back to being uh, there's cattle grazing it at the moment so it's gone through a a lot of changes Uh, but there was a story in 1591 about Hugh O'Neill who who, uh, got his wife from there he he uh, again he wasn't welcome because the 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 wife's brother uh, didn't want anything to do with him so we had to slip out of Turvey house and gallop off in the middle of the night and get married in Drumcondra uh, with the rest of them in full flight after him so again it's a fascinating story and then if i go back to the church there's an article about Father Tyrrell, there is in uh, in my opening thing here, it says every tombstone, like every picture, tells a story. The pyramid-shaped monument in front of Lust Church has an inscription, part of which reads, this monument was erected by the National Repeal Association to the Reverend... Peter James Tyrrell, parish priest of Lusk. And this goes back to Daniel O'Connell's time. Uh, This man was arrested along with Daniel O'Connell when the authorities finally moved on Daniel O'Connell to try and stop his mass movement. So that's what that monument is about. And a lot of people don't know that. They don't know what it is. So if you get this, you'll find out what it is. Next thing, a famine in North County Dublin in... 1917, I think. Uh, uh, No, sorry, that's a later article. This is just about the famine period in Lusk. It talks about places like Hannes Avenue uh, and the Balrother Union, which were built 
to give relief to the people there. So it's just about, there's not much recorded about the famine period in this in this area, but this is a little piece about it. I hop quickly to uh, up the road to the Five Roads, where another uh, great old historian, Willie Monks, came from, and... Uh, Jim Monks now continues his tradition and if you go in there you'll see an incredible if you go into the, the graveyard you will see an incredible tombstone which tells the story of TB and uh, I, I'll just read the first paragraph of this. Uh, there's a truly heart-rending tombstone in Hollywood Graveyard, just up the five roads, past the Nevert. On it is carved the story that almost defies belief. Holy Cross, under thy shadow, we will rest and expect. That simple inscription, it bravely states a belief in God and a hope for a future life. The rest of the inscription chronicles 17 years, which can be, have been nothing short of hell on earth, as a complete family was systemically wiped out with TB. So that's a sad story, but it's, it, it makes you realise what, what we went through in Ireland. Jump quickly to the Battle of Ashbourne. Uh, Thomas Ashe in the Battle of Ashbourne is very much associated with Lusk. He lived in uh, Cardiff. He taught in Cardiff. I went to that school. Uh, I uh, <coughs> grew up and my children grew up uh, looking across at that school. And, and this is the story of Thomas Ashe and of the Battle of Ashbourne. Uh, it's fascinating. Yeah, if you want to get more detailed reports of it, of another book which was written basically for the GAA, but in combination with us and the Lusk Heritage Group, all about Thomas Ash, and that's available, and it's an excellent book, and it also has contributions in it from the Ash family and from people who really knew the period. So yeah, this little book could be a starter that you can give you an introduction. There's... Another little, the name Hand in Lusk has always been famous. An Ailish Hand uh, was particularly famous. She was the founder of the Lusk Fianna Fáil Cumann. And not many people still actually know that Count John McCormick, the famous tenor, he came to Lusk uh, to make a, fi a film called Song of My Heart in, uh, what year was it? I can't quite remember. 1936. 1936, uh, my Pat tells me. And that's, uh, he met Ailish Hand. He actually tried to chat her up, but uh, she hopped on her bike and did a legger. Uh, so the story of that is is here as well. So Maureen O'Sullivan was a, made her debut uh, appearance in films. In that film. That's correct. It, it was Maureen. It was Maureen. Yeah. yeah, it was Maureen O'Sullivan along with 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 uh, Count John McCormick. Uh, who did that and that film is available uh, if you go searching and googling you can find it I've, I have downloaded it and it's been touched up and it really is a beautiful old film uh, uh, w w which was largely shot or a reasonable amount of it shot in Lusk I mentioned earlier that there was a potato famine in 1917. Well, it wasn't really a potato famine, but uh, uh, this was the, 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 the war period and there was uh, a compulsory tillage scheme and the government were trying to control uh, the sale of potatoes and they put a, they put a, a price of £10 a tonne uh, on selling spuds. But the farmers wanted more because... There was a big demand, and one of the factors, Jenkinson's in, in Dublin, uh, sold them for £12 a tonne instead of £10 a tonne. And there was war. They were actually taking the court. Uh, uh, so the, 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 it's, all, it's a fascinating story about that, that period in Lusk, in Rush, and, that, and it, it's a great period. Next one, and just another anecdote about wonderful man that I have always thought to be one of the most Christian and beautiful men I've ever known and that was Henry Maxwell. Henry uh, he's sadly passed but he used to run the Beagles uh, in this area and Henry was a big long dangly man uh, a bit like Forrest Gump uh, and Henry didn't 
chased, uh, followed the Beagles on horseback. Henry ran with the Beagles. He literally ran after them. And if there was a hedge in front and the horses were jumping over it, Henry jumped over the hedge as well. Uh, and So that's a little story, a, a, a tribute in a way uh, to Henry Maxwell. Then there's the Barnwell family. The Barnwell family were uh, uh, owners uh, of uh, Torvey House that was mentioned earlier, but they also uh, were... The, 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 the tombstone is here in the church in Lusk, and the story of the Barnwell family is here as well. So is the story of the Remount farm. Um, that's a, 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 That was a British uh, farm uh, wh- which was there for, for training horses. It was originally opened as a prison. Uh, and now, uh, I think uh, the, that started in 1894 or something. Uh, and there's a lot, there's a little bit left uh, of the Remount Farm, but the story of the Remount Farm is fascinating. There are stories about just people like Aidan Carr, who was a wonderful man I knew, like Dan Sherry, who was also a great uh, institution in Lusk. Uh, there are stories about sporting traditions in Fingal. Uh, there's a poem in it, I'm not going into it now, but uh, I think the poem was written in, in 1721 uh, and it was about a football match between Swords and Lusk. Uh, that's just part of the story, but but it's, it's in there. Uh, there's a nice... Uh, quite long piece about my own mother who my mother was a nurse in, in the war and at the end of the war uh, she was moved to a place in France called saint Lo, which had been bombed to smithereens by the by the Germans on their, uh, trying to get to the to the coast uh, so the the Irish Red Cross moved a, a hospital over there and Mammy was part of that and who was the ambulance driver at the time? Samuel Beckett, our uh, well-known po- uh, um, uh, Nobel uh, Prize for Literature man. Uh, and he used to drive them to dances around uh, the local villages at the weekends. And, and that's the story of, of San Lo, of that hospital, and of my mother uh, and a lot of other fine people who, who were there at the time. And that's what history is... Uh, is about not about dates and, and things it's about people uh, and in a way this is all about people I have a little bit about Willie Monks uh, because uh, a lot of us uh, really started with Willie uh, when he dragged us round uh, every old uh, historical place in North Dublin and he sowed a seed in us all uh, there, there's Names. I'm I'm sitting here and I'm I'm thinking uh, of the, the the names of nicknames: the Ginner Carton, Chadler Dolan, the Budget Moor, the Kaiser Way, the Wanger Finnegan, Gutler Kavna, Gunner Kavna, the Pummy Monks, the Scorer, Pipes Bentley, Wilkes Bentley, the Butt Rogan, Yellow Mick, Cisco Hogan, Cash Brennan. It goes on. Uh, we'd we'd forget these things uh, if we don't it's record so them. Silly. Uh, Stokes Kelly, exactly. Uh, Stokes is in there too. I know Stokes is in there. Uh, Stokes and Fargie. It's great that somewhere this has been recorded. Uh, and then finally, there's a piece about the Black Raven Pipe Band. Again, they're, 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 they have been so much a part of Lusk history. Uh, they're still carrying on uh, a great tradition. So, look, that's this little book. There's other books as well and I would just uh, let people know that they are there uh, and we're quite proud that we have produced these because they weren't produced for us, they were produced so that other people could uh, learn these stories uh, and tell them to their grandchildren.